Hi, uh, my name is Rara and Rara Nimhard and I am, um, you know, I, I hate labels, but um, I'm a person, I'm an artist, um, I'm someone who looks and questions the world and tries to, tries to make sense and meaning um, through art, through art direction, um, design, filmmaking, photography, um, styling. And I'll give you a bit of background. I was, I'm British Jamaican. I was born in the UK to Jamaican parents and I grew up in, I was, yeah. And I moved to South Africa when I was four years old. Um, and then I lived in South Africa till I was 18 and then moved to Asia and, um, to Southeast Asia, and then I was traveling throughout Asia. And so I've had this mix between East, West, African, and identity, and Asian, and, you know, and the West. And so I've tried to make sense of that through my work. Um, I have a, I wouldn't, I don't know if it's a movement, but um, a thought philosophy called Noir Wave. Um, which I run with my partner and my husband, um, Petit Noir, who's an artist as well. As a creative director, I make the visuals to his music. Um, and together we've kind of built this world, which is called Noir Wave. And the reason why we call it Noir Wave is because we look at black as an infinite color where all possibilities exist. It's a spectrum that has no borders, no boxes, no boundaries, no limits. And we use kind of this philosophy, not only to create, but to exist. Um, you know, I advocate a borderless world, a borderless society. And yeah, that's kind of who I am. Thank you, Ra. That was nice. Okay, um, let's go now, Ra. I want to ask you, we, do, we did a survey before we started that, and we were asking people how they were feeling during this um, um, lockdown. So I'm just reading a few responses here and the percentage of like how people are feeling and how the energy is, is going around, right? So we asked, how are you feeling lately? 70% of people were feeling sad or had bad and negative thoughts. 15% of the people were like mixed feelings, some days positive, some days negative. 15% of the people were in peace and were happy about the situation. Mm -hmm. So, but to say all this, like, what do you feel? Personally, I feel like, I mean, this is obviously a very devastating time, but I feel like through destruction, there's always creation, you know? And I do believe all paradigms are completely shifting and breaking down. Um, in the midst of everything, there is a time for us. It's given us a time to turn within. Mother Nature's healing. Mm -hmm. I feel like we needed to get to this point to really stop and to halt. And if it wasn't for this virus, we would have just kept on as usual. So I think it's all about the perspective that we view this um, crisis with. Because I do feel like, you know, everything kind of has to be destroyed for it to get better. And that's the lens I'm kind of viewing it with um, and taking the time to really look, you know, within and see how, what are things that I can change? How have I been treating the environment? How have I been treating, you know, not only the environment, but the people within my circle and my family and my friends and how do I readjust and realign and recenter everything because, you know, as within, so without, as without, so within. So it's kind of, I'm using this time as a mirror. And um, I understand people are, it's, it's really intense with what's going on, especially for artists, for everybody, the global economy is crashing. Um, but this has happened before in history and it will happen again. So we just need to learn the lessons that we need to learn from it, I feel. Yeah, and get out stronger and brighter. And that's why we are doing these kind of talks to kind of like see that there is people that think or feel like us and that there's people that are trying to do also things like we are in different parts of the world. We have people from everywhere. I wrote at least because I was like really excited to see. I, I wrote Germany, Spain, South Africa, France, Sweden, Italy, UK, Congo, Amazing. Venezuela, United States, Sierra Leone. These are all the Amazing. countries we have. It's like everywhere in the world and interested in something and something here is saying that they want to join this conversation. So let's get started. 
Um, so I asked Ra to join that, uh, to join this, this first series because I love what she does. I love her soul, I love her energy. I think it's pure and I just wanted her to be the first one and to share her persona. So she came to me and she's like, I wanna talk about this. I wanna give the freedom for people to speak of, about what they want to speak. So Ra came out with those things, which I think are very interesting. So let's get started. Um, first thing you wanted to talk about is like the silence and space between the work, which I think is really important and also even more that we have so much silence and so much time right now. Mm. Um, the reason why I wanted to discuss that is I feel like, you know, I'm a very, I'm a very introverted person and I think with my artistic practice, I am also very introverted and I take the time and space you know, between different projects to really process everything, to experience life and to be present. And I feel like with today's, um, you know, society where everything is just kind of one thing after the next, after the next, after the next, after the next, um, with social media and just the way that um, everything is structured, it's structured for an artist to constantly produce. And I feel like we need to go back to ways of having experience between works. You know, if you have something to say, you say it. But if you don't, why do we feel the need to keep continuing to talk and talk and produce and produce and produce and produce? And I feel like that's where a lot of the mental health issues are coming from. Do you think that obviously social media has had like a big impact, like has, has an influence, sorry, on, on that? Like completely producing things because you need to show up that you are doing things. And sometimes it's like, I'm doing things, but I need my space and I don't need the world to see it because I need to feel it. I need to explore it. I need to project it. I need to read it again and see like, okay, am I trying to say and express what is here? Or am I trying to just rush things and do something that is maybe superficial at the end? So I think it's, it's a good thing that we think about. Yeah. I mean, you know, what happens between the work and the silence between the work is what really creates the actual work. And I feel like even globally, what's happening, we're, call, we're being called to be silent again, to be introverted, to take that time, because then we just end up with fluff. And I mean, true artist, you're a seer, you know, you're, you're someone who bears the cross for other people. And so I think it's really important, you know, before social media, before the advent of the internet, people would take, you know, it would be years to produce, 10 years, 15 years, bodies of work would take time. You know, how do I take the time to actually be and not feel like pressured by social media, by society to produce? You know, and will I be okay as well? I know we have to do it for monetary gain at the same time. So there's that whole, you know. Um, say that. It's like art, it's something, it should be something so pure because it's obviously connected to your feelings in, in, in the process. And like, maybe sometimes not. Maybe it's just like something that you want to just, yeah. but like for people like maybe us, it's very important for our own health. Like I treat my art as, as, as a work, as like as, as taking my pain out of myself and putting it out there and like sharing it with other people that might feel the same way as I do. So it's like kind of like healing and connecting with other people, you know? So that's how I feel that art is. So I think also like um, capitalism has had a big impact on that. Not just on like working for money, but like, just producing like nonstop. It's very tricky, but I, I feel like, you know, if you can find that balance, um, not only for your sanity and your mental health, but also just because the potency of the work um, will be so much stronger. Um, and also the experience leads back into your life back into your art, it all bleeds back. And the more that we go deeper and work deeper, we attract deeper as well. So, you know, we could be working for money on a very quick, quick scale, and we get like kind of money that comes back at the same scale, if you know what I mean. Um, but how do we completely shift our thinking, you know, to work deeper and get paid deeper? Hi. 
I just wanted to add that I am working in a very different area. I am in journalism and this thing happened also uh, there. Because in the past, we used, you used to cover something and you used to go there and take all mm. day to observe what was going on and then all day to work on a piece. But now, uh, in my studies, they teach us that we have to be there and while we are there, we have to uh, keep updating the content in social media and mm. also make like six, six different pieces, a chronic, and it's impossible just to be somewhere, think mm -hmm. and produce. So I think it's something that is affecting in all the areas. Virus, right? Like it's for all of us in any area. It's not just the creative area. It's like everything we do. We need to think, do, process, like everything takes time. And we take time, like life takes time. Like we just have to observe nature. Like it's not like, okay. I think this virus and other things that are coming are going to show us a mirror on that and kind of force us to move back to a more organic way of creating and being. Hi, um, thank you so much for this dinner. It's really, really wonderful. Um, I'm a writer and part of my medium is exploring the divine feminine and restoring the divine feminine in my um, artistic discipline, which is usually the intersection of technology, design and spirituality. And I find that with writing, you know, like with any artistic expression, it has to flow through you. You know, you are the vessel mm -hmm. for that essence to come through. And it's like the pressure from social media and to produce content is insane. It's like, you know, there's always a time limit and or like um, a, a deadline that one has to, you know, reach these objectives where it's like you can't you can't quantify that expression. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank thank you for raising that. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what the solution is to it, but I think if we start creating our own structures and coming together, yeah. you know, whether, and, and the feminine energy is not, it doesn't just have to do with the gender, you know, yeah. male, may, they can have that feminine energy, but I think it's a consciousness, it's a mindset. Mm. We're not just looking for feminine energy, we're looking for balance. Absolutely. That, you know? Yeah. Um, that's because we have both we have both but there's been there's been a pull towards one of it and we're suffering under it and i think even the males are suffering under it no one can really keep up and it's because we have this idea of scarcity yeah you know yeah. and that's what ca it's just scarcity that we're running at where we feel like there's not enough but we're not sewing back into ourselves because we're running on nothing we're running on empty you know, art is still potent today, but I feel like if we, we took the time to really, you know, like take in what we're experiencing and, and give ourselves time to also have experiences, do we even have time to be in the moment and experience things and then sit with it, you know, whether it be for a few months and a year and really process yeah. what's going on? That's really interesting what you do. Thank you. You too. <laughs> I love Norway. I'm a huge admirer of you and Petty Noir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi. I'm Samaya. Um, I'm actually located in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I used to live in Atlanta. That's where I grew up. Um, I got married. I became a mother. Mm. The pressure that I was feeling from social media, from my job at the time, um, just put my child in daycare after mm. 90 days and when there's this natural thing of like you want to take care of your child you want to be there you want to experience every first thing every first walk every first word and it took me about maybe a month ago for me to be ready to articulate everything that I was experiencing because it really mm. is a life-changing thing and it's transforming and just thinking about how many things do we um, sacrifice to keep up with the machine. Um, and I'm proud of myself for not sacrificing that. I'm proud of myself for even moving. Now, I, you know, I'm definitely a newer person. You know, these things change you and make you better and to understand that and not just have zoomed through it um, mm -hmm. is important. So thank you for touching on that.
you. Thank you. That's that's super important. I mean, I think lately I've also just been when I when I ask questions and I talk and I I look for answers. I meditate with my womb because I'm trying to learn how to not be so um, like thinking, not to learn how to stop thinking with my mind, you know, and start thinking with the womb that I came out of, you know, right. And right. let that right. guide me in terms of my decisions, my time, how I relate to the world and the environment and know that I can trust this, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's a whole shift in perception of how to think because we have to kind of unlearn. And what is chasing all of that stuff if you're not happy? It makes no sense. I feel like I'm on a rat race. And why be like everyone else when you can be unique? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we only have our power once we're true to ourselves. Once we stand in our power and we listen to our intuition and we follow that voice within is the time when we're able to give the most. Other than that, we're not giving much. We're literally just copying and pasting someone else's idea and dream for us, you know? So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for that wisdom. Thank you. When I decided uh, to work a career in music, I was uh, really convinced about it. But what I'm finding is that I personally uh, create from a feminine energy space. And it's really, really hard for me uh, if I'm pressured in that masculine structure and more of a go, go, go thing. I'm, I block, I get blocked and I, 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 I can't create. How do we find, find the balance where we can create that space for feminine energy and creation mm. to flow, but at the same time, sustain ourselves. With mm. our- I mean, I think the way that you're saying, um, if you have to sustain yourself by doing another thing, and then you keep your art as pure as possible, I would say that is the best balance. Because for me, art is a very spiritual thing. And if, you, if you're connecting it to the divine feminine, Um, then you cannot afford to play with it, you know, because it's an incubator, it's a womb. And if you have to sustain yourself, I I would rather sustain myself, you know, in other ways so that my art could be as pure as possible. And if it's something, I mean, obviously, if you have to balance in the beginning, but the long-term intention is that um, just as much as you feed your art, your art will begin to feed you even more exceedingly you know, then that is the intention that you work towards and that's the energy that you put into it, that you nurture it and it nurtures you back. You asked about how do you find that space and I I don't know, I mean, for me, connecting with nature, going back to understand, you know, the power of the womb, the power of you as a woman, you know, your period, your cycle, how powerful you actually are because we don't understand our power because no one taught it to us. Um, And once we realize that we're the creators of this whole existence, it wouldn't be here if it wasn't for us. Why are we even tripping? Everything should, I'm not saying everything should revolve around us, (laughs) but we are first, we are primordial. You know, and once we understand that energy, I think we move from the scarcity um, aspect of things. And I know I'm I'm speaking very like, you know, theoretically, but I think it takes that personal decision to move into that that direction and then life responds accordingly. I don't know if that answers your question. (laughs) Thank you. I remember Ra when we met and I was like, and Ra, I need to tell you something. It's a, it's a bit weird, but maybe you get it. And I was telling you that I was, exp- like, I was experimenting with my period, like with my blood. And I was, you know, researching on like how we use our period to like be powerful and connect and all of that. And you were like, oh, I've been doing that forever. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Thank God I don't feel weird because sometimes I feel like we are witches, you know? We come back from this period of time when we were just like, boom, 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 boom. Our power was like, God, it was like, we disappeared and we need to reclaim the time. And I don't care. Like, 
our period to do things and it's our blood. We, we shouldn't be disgusted by it. We should be, we should be empowered. So something yeah, to but also understanding, you know, how our blood syncs up with the moon and how powerful that we are synced up to nature. Nature and us are in a deep conversation every single month. And so like if me and nature are in conversation, what is the world, you know? How do you create a space where it, it's not important what they say and you don't have to feel that pressure to create something that just isn't you um, and not feel burdened by it and not feel depressed that you're not making something that, that other people are like um, gaining interest from? Mm. I, w- I mean, personally, I would say you need to get off either get off social media and use it as a tool where when you have, remember social media, we've turned it. It's just a tool for us to put out our, you know, before it was just sharing your life or whatever. And if you're using it as a tool, as an artist, it's just putting, using it as a tool for your work. That's it. And I feel like the pressure comes in when we're constantly viewing other people's lives, you know, 24 seven, and then we start feeling pressurized. But if we completely get off it and just it when we need to post our work, there is no pressure and we start living in the present more. Everyone's creating this non-existent pressure where there is no pressure. Nobody cares, to be honest. I know it sounds really, but literally nobody's like, oh, have you posted today? Oh, this person hasn't posted today. It's all in our minds. It's a movie that is playing out constantly, but everybody's having the same movie in their head. They're all having that same conversation. Oh, um, you know, like, how do I keep up? Everybody's having the same conversation. And it's it's a dangerous loop to be in. You know, so I think if you can kind of use social media just as a tool that you post your work when it's done, then there is no pressure. You remove yourself completely out of social media till you're done. And whatever time that takes, if that takes one year, if that takes six months, if that takes a day, when you've got something to say, you say it. Um, First of all, you're not making work for anyone. And I, I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're talking about commercial work or if it's commercial work, it's a different thing. But if it's your art, then you have to remove everybody else from your art. You're making art okay. because it's, it's an expression of your experience or it's something that you want to communicate. And it doesn't matter. And I know it's hard to say that, but you know, it's, it's equating, if I don't like your image on Instagram, are you going to stop creating? And I think a lot of people go through that, where if they're not getting the likes, there's a lot of doubt and fear. And it's like, oh, so people don't like my work, but we're giving too much power to people, you know, um, and to an algorithm as well (laughs) that shadow bans (laughs) your work most of the time so it's not a true reflection of your work and you cannot um you can't put your um your worth towards likes worth and likes are two different things but i think that's what that's the harm of social media that's what it's doing but i think what's important is if you if you have a small group or or forums like this, actually, where you can share your work and get critique on your work rather than safe spaces, rather than looking um, from that validation from social media. It's way more healthy because you create a healthier relationship with your work. But first and foremost, do not create looking for validation. Mm. If I literally draw on a paper with a pen, And that's my art and it's simply a line, but it's my experience that has gone into that line and my intention. Nobody can tell me that that line is whack Mm -hmm. (laughs) because if I put my sweat, my tears, my blood and my tears into that line, 
that line means what it means to me and nobody can take away that from me. That's the freedom and that's the power of art. And I think we need to stop looking for validation because once we stop looking for validation, we're also putting fear towards our art. We're already creating the vibration of fear. Well, thank you for, for my turn to speak and it's cool to be here. As you've said before, um, we feel that we don't care regardless our parents or our community cares about it. We, we do it um, despite it and we go forward with it, but it's incredibly hard. And sometimes it's incredibly hard to find um, people that are like-minded like you and that are in the same, in the same wave of, of thought or with the same aesthetic um, direction and, and, um, and same aesthetic references. In the city I live and in the context I live, I feel an incredibly lack of, um, of, of, of black references, of, of black cultures. I don't know, you can feel othered in the place where you are. You can feel like there's not the right, the right uh, vibe or input or people to talk to about your experiences or people to create with or if you're starting, how do you start from scratch? Actually, you know what? I felt like that when I was living um, in Asia and I was, I was the only, there was nothing for me to fall back on. Um, I was the only person of color and there was just from food to culture. And I lived there for six years. But for me, it was one of the hardest experiences of my life but I chose it because I knew that there was nothing to fall back onto. There was no culture for me to fall back onto. There was no, I was completely othered. Um, but I used that as my strength because I think in situations like that, you get even more creative because you don't have a point of reference. So you find your own point of reference. Um, and you, you, start, you start creating new worlds because that's the only thing you can do. But I think in those spaces, it's really, really special. And if you change your perspective on that, you can create some, some of the most powerful and channel that into your performances. You know, that's a story within itself. Um, that's a door, actually. Um, because I do believe that's where the best work is produced um, through situations like that because they're very unique situations. And, and they're not unique because there's a lot of people that are in those situations. So if you can create something out of that, then other people can start identifying with your situation that are in similar situations. Hi, um, I had a similar experience because I moved from South Africa to Switzerland. And I was in this small little place where I felt like I was existing in this creatively now void where there was absolutely nothing for me to draw creative strength or sort of reference from or even bounce ideas from. I think it was soul crushing. But then the beauty about it, I think as Rara just said right now, is that you build your own frame of reference. And I actually mm -hmm. came to a point where I realized how just... No, yeah, not ignorant, but then my level of consciousness shifted because mm -hmm. of that, because I was drawing from my inner being rather than the world around me that I was comfortable in. And I was now sort of coming into myself. And now mm -hmm. that I'm in a better place, I feel like creatively I'm more brave and courageous based off that mm -hmm. experience. So I think if you try to draw strength from it, it can actually become the fuel that drives you and amidst naysayers and just feeling like you know you're the only black mm -hmm. person because yes our experiences are unique in their own ways that can become your messaging i think you're right that's where your strength and your ba bravery comes from because when you're in situations like that after that no one can tell you anything you know because you've created out of that space where there has been no affirmations no validation exactly. you know yeah. Mm. So let's move into the um, spirituality moment and how it's related to art and if it's important, how important it is, for example, for you, how do you relate to it and how important is the practice 
or to connect with it in, in for it for you to create for me spirituality and art are so symbiotic and they go hand in hand um i need art like i need god and um i think that's a beautiful correlation because art is the only thing i mean actually not art we're all creators we're all co-creators and whatever we create we're all artists i believe everyone is an artist because we're constantly creating in whatever profession um yes <laughs> um, <laughs> you know my spiritual practice enables me to go deeper within my art the deeper i go within my spirituality is the deeper i can uncover my artistic practice um and it's crazy because for me i kind of have to have an experience before i create i wish i could just create um but it, unfortunately i can't um i say i mean it comes from within but i do believe it comes from without as well and the artist is just a channel or a medium to be able to convey a message and that's how i view art and so i think being able to keep your body as pure as possible your mind as pure as possible um to be able to remove blockages from within so that you can get the message clearer as an artist you're carrying a cross not that you're you're a voice for the voiceless you put yourself on the front line you know for a whole world of people that get inspiration art has saved me so many times you know in my darkest moments but that's why i know the artist sometimes is you know they're on the front lines and they had to go through things that nobody would go through just so that we could feel that through their art you know and i don't want to romanticize the whole idea of struggle and art but you you're putting your struggle you're putting your happiness you're putting your pain into it and so to be able to do that you need to have the the clearest channel you know if that makes sense um do you like to share so, spiritual practices or like how do you clean yourself or like what do you do mm i think you know i've had to learn the kind of hard way because these experiences as you said they when you don't when you don't do the work the work comes to find you and so um i kind of have been forced you know through health issues through different experiences to stop and to wake up and to listen um and so my spiritual practices are just you know meditation prayer eating right um trying to do also the work confront my fears so having friends that help you to to um understand like what spiritual cleansing is you know i grew up in a very christian household and um you know we take physical baths but we also need spiritual baths and i think there's different techniques that everyone can find um you know using sage to cleanse your space um really just making the vibrations as pure as possible is important um the right eating spending time in nature mm -hmm. you know because that's actually that's the the biggest key if you don't want to do anything else just spending time if you can in nature because mother will also teach us what we need to know and also just being having a willing heart to be able to listen and to stop and ask what is the work that i need to do within to remove some of the blockages um looking at time in a cyclical nature instead of linear there is no rush there's no rush however long it takes to do that work being committed to the journey you know rather than the destination the process is more important than the destination and falling in love with the process falling in love with falling down after every step you know i'm i'm a perfectionist and i've had to learn the hard way like stop fall in love with the journey like who actually cares about the destination you know the journey is radical that's when you're dreaming that's when you're like inspired that's when you're crying even those like those really really intense emotions of fail failure and fear and like 
that's that's like the the essence of the journey the destination is like that's when it's done and who cares about perfection no one is perfect why do we aim for perfection what about aiming for our rawness you know and that's a new journey that i've been on and it's taken me to the most magical places because i i've been free like i'm free you know i'm truly truly free because i'm not in love with a destination anymore like i'm literally just in love with the process and being and even the hurt and the pain and the failure that's when i'm alive i wanted to add like when you said that you meditate with your womb um i remember that my my ovaries always hurt and it was like i have like a weird relationship and i know a lot of women suffer from like illnesses down there like we have like so yes. many and then when i started working with my therapy so she started like um making me go through my female lineage and like my my mom my grandmother everything that they have been taught that wasn't serving me and it took me a while to realize that i needed to heal myself you know like yes. it's important for us because it's been suppressed for so 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 much time that we don't recognize it and we need to get back to it it's hard it's fucking hard like i i suppressed my emotions so much i'm so emotional and i suppressed them so bad i couldn't do anything because I couldn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. And then I just allowed them. Like I was also like present. Whenever I have to cry now, I'm just like, okay, time to cry. I go to my bed. I cover myself, you know, I hug myself, I kiss myself, I do whatever. I comfort myself and I let this feeling go through me without blaming. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm wasting my time. No, that's the process. That's the way that's gonna lead me that maybe tomorrow I'm gonna create something from that from that pain that I experienced. So that was beautiful and touchy and I think a lot of people here related to it. So I mean, maybe I'll just add my personal experience with connecting um, with the more feminine energy um, was two years ago, um, I got diagnosed with fibroids and fibroids are non-cancerous um, tumors in your womb. And I had just gotten married, I think it was almost yeah two and a half years ago. And these things appeared in my womb and I never knew, nobody had ever told me what fibroids were. Um, and then I started researching and 70% of black women or women of color or 80% suffer from it. Um, and I was like, why had no one told me that? And I, you know, it went from a place of, I was in a very, um, they weren't affecting me. And then fast forward um, six, seven months, and I was carrying, my womb was the size of someone who was six months pregnant, and I was in so much pain, and I was in, you know, it was unbearable, and four surgeries later, um, I kind of realized that I needed to address something within me. You know, and nobody had ever told me how to connect with the, the feminine energy. All I was taught was, you know, you're a woman, you need to be strong, you need to do like housework, you need to, no one ever taught me about like the power that we hold. And so I think, you know, you don't have to go through that, obviously, to connect with your womb. But as I said, start, start just connecting with that area or start connecting with the feminine energy, with your mother you produce the world, you know, so there's nothing for you to kind of fear and listen to your intuition more. Don't listen to your mind. Don't listen to what people are saying. Listen to that, that deep knowing and that intuition. And I think that's a more feminine approach. Um, whatever your gender is listening to your intuition. Even if the outcome is scary, will you still listen to your intuition? Because that's the real test. It's actually the only thing you have to do is follow the signs, follow the into your intuition, even if it doesn't make sense at the time. Mm -hmm. It may not make sense, but having the courage to walk through that door and saying, here I am. And it's a, it's a practice, right? It's like just little by little starting to trust yourself again, because mm -hmm. I, I, I lost it. Like I, I just forgot about it. And now I'm just getting in touch with it. And someone said here, the trauma cycle is really hard to break. And it's true. We have come from like different traumas from generations. Like we don't even know what happened back there. And 
it's hard to sit down and be like, no, not anymore. I'm not taking it anymore. I'm not repeating the same mistakes. I'm not behaving the way my parents behaved with me or with their mm. parents. Like, I'm going to face that and I'm going to clean that and I'm going to be a free being with a new reset, right? And that's why I think this generation and the new generation after us is awakening and it's seeing these things, right? And it's like wanting to open up and like get in touch and like go back to what we had, to the freedom and to that trust and to that union with like the world. Like what you said, no frontiers, like whatever. Like let's just get together. We are here feeling exact same, same things. Thank you so much. Um, I just, I'm like nervous because I can't believe I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm nervous too. I'm also <laughs> nervous. Like I'm super nervous. So thank oh, you. Home. <laughs> Um, you know, the only thing that I really have that's close to you and just seeing how your life is, is, is through social media and the pictures that you post and your travel. Travel is one of the things as a creative for myself that I haven't been able to experience. Um, and I feel like it's the missing piece to the puzzle. But then there's life. And we talked about this, um, you know, with finding that creative, like, thing to push you or to get you out of fear. And I'm working on that. I'm trying not mm. to beat myself up, but it, it's like when I'm when my spirit feels like I need to be in Egypt or I need to be in South Asia, and I'm like, all right, where the money gonna come from? It's like, <laughs> well, I, I know, but you know what? As long as that's a goal, you yeah. know, set that intention. It's gonna happen. It's going to happen as long as you, you know, my parents, um, they came from a very, like, you know, we came from Birmingham and in Birmingham, we came from the hood in Birmingham. And yes. the reason they moved to South Africa is, and they literally also, they went to the airport with no money. Like they were broke, like some miracle came through for them, but they yes. said, we always want our children to travel. If that's the only thing because we never were able to travel. And they set that intention from before we were born because wow. they saw like, you know, kids outside peddling drugs. And they were like, I don't want this for my kids, but they didn't understand how or where or how that reality could ever become a possibility. But they were so determined by it exactly. that it became the reality, you know? It became the reality. So just keep that intention and it will happen. All right. Okay. I don't want to hold it up. Thank you so much once again. Thank I appreciate you. you. How are you guys? Thank hey, you. oops. How are you? <laughs> What's happening? Oh, um, so it's kind of a weird question because obviously you've known me since I was quite yeah. young. Yeah. And that was like when I was at like my creative peak. I'm now 25 and I found that like, I've taken that whole like silence thing, started looking in like um, breaking like um, family traumas, especially with the women in my family, because I do come from like a very strong women led family anyway. Um, but I'm still finding that like my creative spark isn't exactly there. And it's starting to get a little bit frustrating because I know that I should be patient and like let the creativeness come. But having come from like 17 and being as busy as I was back then. So can you see like so how busy I was then I'm I've slowed down completely to almost like a stop and I'm in a little bit of a panic because I still do want to pursue like the publication and stuff like that and I know that I want to try different things but I just don't have that inspiration and even with traveling yeah. traveling I've tried reading so I just wanted to know if like you've gone through that if other people have yeah. gone babe I haven't created anything since 2017 <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> like I've just been experiencing and exploring like and now there's a new body of work that's coming to me and I've just been exploring and going into different cultures you know traveling but not even looking for something like simply being and then you know this new body of work that I'm, I've been trying to to think about what it is um but I know what it is now and it's hit me and it's strong like it's strong like but I had to wait and I had to I actually had to like have a death you know <laughs> I drowned in a waterfall like many many things happened for me to be able to 
now I have something to say. And I don't, I also don't know how long it's going to take for me to be able to articulate what I have to say, because I, now I know what I want to say. I mean, I'm turning 31 this year and I feel like I only feel now, even the work I've been doing, I wasn't, I was doing that work with someone. I wasn't doing that work for myself because I was fearful of myself. I was fearful of my own voice. And so it's taken me a three year journey to understand the power of my own voice and how to articulate it and how to now it's like the mediums, like what are the mediums that I'm going to use? And so it takes time. It takes time. You're also 25, like as women, as men, we can go till 80. We have decades in front of us, decades. Like what is the rush? and it's fine it's we need to normalize that like it's completely fine like take that time to be and even if you have nothing to say if you also inspiration Mm -hmm. it strikes it's for some people it strikes every day but for a lot of people and like for me personally it strikes like lightning once in a blue moon like i really have to catch that lightning i'm being I'm just being, and being is okay. Like being, that's our power. Like if we go back to ancient or even our traditional cultures, it wasn't output orientated. Mm. You know, in our traditional cultures, you would just, you would have even your cleaning, your rituals, being in society, being one with nature. That's a job, you know finding out your relationship with your parents, with nature, that's a job all on itself. And that takes time. Also healing past traumas. That's a, that takes years, you know? Um, And I just think we don't need to add to the noise. There's so much noise out there. Why would you want to add something that's not potent to it? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the point? Rather keep your mouth shut. (laughs) because even that is like powerful keeping quiet these days is powerful mystery is powerful again uh so my question is have you ever felt all Mm. of the influences that you have um from western to eastern to african to european have any of those ever felt polarizing for you um Mm. person and if they have how did you work through them um or always kind of at peace with all of those different things and being all those different things at the same time when you're Mm. quite one thing but you're this combination of so many different things Mm. I mean I think for a long time they felt very polarizing as someone who was born in the UK and then moved to South Africa at age five you know, who was also Jamaican, I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. So when I would go home, they would say, yeah, but you're not, I didn't really have a British accent. They'd be like, oh, but you're not really like British. And then my Jamaican family, you know, if I would go to, if I had to go to Jamaica, you know, I would still be considered a foreigner. And then in the place that I grew up, which, you know, I would consider home South Africa, I would still be considered you know, somewhat foreign because I I didn't speak the language or, you know, so I existed foreign in all places. And that was really hard, but it also gave me an opportunity to create my own world, you know. And now my focus, a lot of my focus is on the connections between Africa, India, the global South together, because I feel like there's so many similarities. It's been a curse, but it's a blessing because I feel like I'm a child of the world now. Mm. And that's my outlook on life. Like I fit in nowhere and everywhere. So create your own identity. Like even though I'm African, I can't divorce myself from the West because it's a part of me as well, you know? Um, And so how do we, how do we create a fusion out of that? A hybrid identity that acknowledges all parts of ourselves, but doesn't box ourselves in. Because, you know, at the same time, it's like, what is an African identity? What is a Black identity? We box ourselves within these labels, you know? Um, 
even within our art practices, it would be like, are you creating a certain type of African narrative art? What does that mean? And why do you feel the need to box yourself? Because once you box yourself, it's hard to get out of that box. But I've tried to remove all those black boxes. And yes, I create work within an African context, but now I'd like to even just make work that's not within an African context. I just want to create work. The more we can move without, um, away from these boxes, the more free we become, not only within ourselves, but with our practices and our, our frameworks and our understanding. Obviously paying respect and homage to the cultures that you come from, but realizing that you're a hybrid of all cultures. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Um, obviously, I know that everyone is dealing with, you know, spiritual anxiety at the moment, but I just mm. want to kind of push the, the happy wave, the, the part of the noir wave, what makes, what I feel when I look at noir wave work, and mm. I just want to understand how your blend of cultures that you've grown up, you know, with, um, mm. how they shape your work, and post-lockdown, what kind of research are you interested in um, diving into? Mm. Today there's no corona and no lockdown. Where would you be right now? What would you want to research? Well, if there was no corona right now. Um, well, recently, as I said, I've been diving into, you know, um, into a lot of feminine work. So I would be, you know, I've been trying to go to places. I just came back from Mexico and I was there with Gabrielle and we went to, you know, a women's march. And there's just certain things that I'm looking at right now where structures are falling, old paradigms, patriarchy is falling, and I'm following how the feminine is rising, whether that is in nature or it's politically... Um, I'm researching a lot of like blood. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm doing a lot of research in terms of where we come from, the power that's been suppressed within us, um, yeah. and things that were thought to be taboo that are actually very um, powerful and spiritual. Yeah. Um, I would probably be between India and Mexico. And I will say these places, you know, they call me. Mm, so yeah, it's not, yeah, it, it feels like, you know, like India, like different places, it's like they call me vibrationally and it's like I have to go there. And I have been focusing, you know, since I moved to Asia and then, you know, understood the similarities, I've been focusing on this global South. And I think even more now, I'm trying to travel as much in the global south which is places you know third world countries let's say but to try and piece the connections between all these different cultures Mm -hmm. and to kind of walk on that land and see oh is it the same as africa you know i do feel like a new time is coming and you know the different mothers of these countries are calling us back you know whether you know it's not to live but we need to go to those countries and actually place our feet on the soil so that we can get the information. You know, it's all cool to like, I mean, you can research to a point, but then you have to go and you have to feel. And I think, yeah, yeah, that's kind of been the journey and that's kind of where I would be right now um, is either in India or Mexico. Um, because I want to go back and to Mexico and see as well, like Latin America, because I've done Asia and Africa, and I'd like to do that part of the world as well. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I'm sad to conclude that, but we need to finish. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone. And I just want you guys to like think about, like, I'm going to read something that she sent me when I asked her for, like to be the first one. She was like, I'm not confident to be the first one, but we work to be. I've been asking to work with my throat chakra more. So maybe this is the universe way of proving that. This means that when you finish that, go home and think that things that you are afraid of doing or don't feel confident about doing, just think about them. 
and step because I'm sure this is a really good exercise for the both of us for healing for mm. working on this thing of communicating I hate to speaking in public but I thought that I needed to create this platform to put together all these people from the world to have these conversations that are needed because sometimes in your space you don't find people like that but there is people like that everywhere and we can support each other so mm. that's that's something that I, it was like more powerful than my, than my fear. So thank you, Ra, for overcoming your fear and for being so nice and so inspiring for everyone in here. Thank you so much and I hope to see you Thank guys. you so much. Thank you to everyone for participating. Bye. Blessings. Bye. Bye.